Hi, I'm Rachel Romeliotis, a senior editor at O'Reilly, and I'm here at OzCon 2013 with Damian Conway, prolific speaker and author. Thank you for joining me. Uh, great pleasure, Rachel. Good to see you. So the first thing I actually want to talk to you about is uh, Vim. There's lots of text editors out there. Why are you so partial to Vim? Uh, I think it's for historical reasons. Way back in the Jurassic period, when I first learned to program, that was the editor that we were given. And I, I, I kind of think that a very large number of people, the editor that they ended up using was the one that they started using. Because eventually you get so invested in it, and you've downloaded so much of it into your fingertips, that you can't actually afford to go to the other editor because you, you kind of lose about 20 IQ points mm -hmm. just trying to remember the keystrokes for it. Right. So I guess the other thing was that I've always been like a two-finger typist. I never actually learned to touch type. Mm -hmm. And so that would put me at a disadvantage in Emacs anyway where everything is kind of a chord. Whereas in Vim, almost everything is just one key. So mm -hmm. I, I guess it kind of fits my, my mentality a little bit better. Okay, and I know that was a popular talk you gave here at OzCon. So um, we talked last year uh, around the same time about Perl. Yep. And I believe we were at uh, Perl 5.10, was that correct? Maybe 5.12? No, no, we were well past that. We oh, were, all right. We were well so past tell me, that, well, 5.14. In, in any way, tell me um, what's happened in the past year with Perl. Okay, so in the past year, um, just a couple of months ago now, uh, 5.18 came out. Okay. So we're, we're zipping along, not quite as fast as Mozilla is with Firefox, but you know, we're, we're updating pretty regularly. Um, a lot of the recent focus in Perl 5 has been about cleaning up stuff that, that really wasn't quite there in the earlier versions of Perl. So um, in, the, in the 5.10 through 5.14, we introduced a lot of new features, some of which were sort of retrofitted from Perl 6. For 5.16 and 5.18, there's been a lot more focus on uh, cleaning up the internals. There's been some fantastic work there being done there by people like Dave Mitchell. Um, especially on the regex engine, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing. So there's been a lot of work of just getting things to be cleaner and getting ourselves staged for the, the next influx of, of great new features sure. that, that I expect will be in 520 and 522 over the next year or so. Okay. So there's been a lot of really good work done with that in Perl 5. On the Perl 6 side of things, it again has been a lot of uh, consolidation and, and implementation going on there. Just building out the actual implementation of the language. But the really exciting thing that's uh, that's been going on over the last maybe 12 months, but especially over the last six months or so, is we've been moving out onto other uh, virtual machines. So Perl 6 has always been targeted as a, a multiple back-end language, whereas sure. in Perl 5, it's always been just the Perl 5 engine, and that was basically all there ever was. Mm. But the great thing about that was it was so optimized that it was all we ever needed. Mm -hmm. In Perl 6, we're taking a more modern approach whereby we'd like to be running on the Parrot virtual machine, we'd mm -hmm. like to be running on the JVM, we'd like to be running on more VM and mm. various other virtual machines as well. And so in the last uh, year or so, we've seen a lot of work go into, well, how can we get the front end sub sufficiently abstracted so that we can just slide in whatever sure. back end works best for whoever needs it? Uh, and there's been a lot of progress made on that, and uh, I, I do believe that Larry's going to have some announcements for that uh, at the Ooh, State of the Onion tonight. That's so, awesome. Uh, I'm quite looking forward to that myself. That's fantastic. So, yeah. and I know, so I know the Pearl Five, Pearl Six thing's been going on. Do you think when it finally does come out, it's it, is it going to replace Five, or is it going to kind of be its own thing? Well, the first thing I'd say is it's out. Okay. I mean, you can download it. You've been okay. able to download it for several years. We've had I don't know what now, 45 consecutive releases of the, the Perl 6, mm -hmm. um, it's not production ready yet. Yes. So it's not 600 yet. Right. Uh, I think when it, when it does get to the point where you can comfortably say, yeah, you want to use this in production, um, it's not going to replace 5. Uh, in the same way that C++ didn't replace C. Sure, sure. Uh, although the analogy is not perfect because Perl is much more high level than C compared to C++ and right. Perl 6. But we really s completely think of this as being sister languages. Okay. That these are two different takes on the same fundamental ideas about uh, having flexibility, having more than one way of solving a problem. Mm -hmm. But Perl 5 was kind of the wild child sister, mm -hmm. the elder sister who were, was out there and doing whatever she wanted to do. Perl 6 is a little bit more, um, well, not conservative, but a little bit more 
experienced in the world mm -hmm. and we realized, you know, there are a lot of ways of doing things, but they're not all good. Sure. So what we wanted to do for Pearl Six was to bring in what we perceive to be the best way of doing mm -hmm. various things like OO or um, regular expression, parsing or mm -hmm. whatever it happens to be and take that 20 years of hindsight of using Pearl 5 and say, well, if we could do it again, mm -hmm. we probably wouldn't have done this, we probably would have done that. And that's what we did. Right. In every single instance in Pearl 6, we took the best practice, not just from Pearl 5, but from 20 other languages that are out there. You right. know, we, we looked at Python, we said, you know what, there are things that Python does a whole lot better than Perl 5 does. Right. Uh, and I don't have to enumerate them, the, the, the Python people know what they are, the sure. Perl people know what they are. So we said, what we really want to do is steal all those good ideas. Mm. But not just from them, from Smalltalk, from Erlang, mm -hmm. from Clojure, from whoever it happens to be, so that we have a language that still has that, that um, flexible philosophy of Perl 5, but w in which you have all the modern tools mm -hmm. that all of the other languages give you in a clean and integrated way. So when someone's deciding what programming language to use for something, why would they decide to use Perl? Well, the bottom line is because they already know it. Mm -hmm. And never discount the fact that a lot of language decisions are not based on technical need or anything else. They're based on, well, that's what I know how to use already. Sure. And that's not a bad reason to choose. I mean, if, if you've got a job to do, you don't have the luxury of, oh, we'll take three years to get this done. Sure. You've got to get it out the door. Mm -hmm. And if you're working in a system that you already know really well, you're going to be two or three more times more productive than you would be getting up to speed on something else. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the reason to choose Perl is that, for a start, the CPAN. Whatever you want to do, half of it's already done and it's sitting there free and open source on the CPAN. Okay. Uh, so very often, um, I, I mean, I use a range of languages. But very often, the first thing I'll do is check out, well, who has the frameworks, who has the modules to do what I need to do? Mm -hmm. And frankly, the answer you always get back from that is pretty much either Perl or Java, because they're the languages that invest most in having vast, enormous libraries and frameworks of right. stuff available. So for me, the choice is always, well, A, I'm pretty good at Perl, and B, <coughs> half of my job is already done for me, by someone else who was pretty good at Perl and put it out there on the CPAN form. Right. Um, other reasons, because maybe you don't quite know how you're going to do this yet mm -hmm. and you want a language that's going to be able to adapt to you. I mean, if you choose Python, then you're going to be able to write a really clean application, but it's going to be object-oriented. Right. And if OO isn't the right metaphor for the particular task you've got, if you want to really do this in a functional style, mm -hmm. that's not as easy to do in Python as it is to do in Perl. Sure. On the other hand, if you chose Haskell, you've made the decision, this is going to be functional programming. If it turns out that a part of it would be better off being object-oriented, again, that gets hard. In Perl, either of those options is equally achievable for you. Plus, you have the option of doing it in a procedural way mm -hmm. where you can get a lot of people in that can that already know how to do that. Sure, sure. So, final question. You, you mentioned you know, that you've got a couple decades of history uh, in Perl. How do you think the community is doing? Do you think it's, it's um, growing again? Or what, do you, what is the temperature, sort of, of what's going on? Okay, well, I, I think the reports of Perl's death are greatly exaggerated, and I, I think they always have been. I think that we're not seeing Pearl being the golden child uh, anymore because there are other golden children coming along. Mm -hmm. But I think that there are very few organizations you go into where some very core part of that is not relying on Pearl scripts to do whatever it is it has to do. Sure. So I see the, the, the state of the language as being not growing as fast as it has at the, at the, in the past, mm -hmm but solid and um, with a good availability of really top flight people. I mm -hmm. think one of the issues for the Perl community is how do we draw more young people into the community when there are newer, maybe sexier languages sure. that they want to be looking at. But, and that's always seen as a, a kind of a disadvantage. When we talk about these things, that's kind of a, well, how do we get new people in? How do we get new people in? But the flip side of that is 
if you can get hold of a pearl developer, you've got, you've got someone who's been doing pearl for a long time, who knows the ins and outs of the language, and can get your job done really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think we kind of undersell that a little bit, that, that if, if you hire a, a, a new Java dev, you might get someone who is really good, but you might get someone who's been out of the classroom for six months and wasn't all that good in the classroom either. If you get a, a Perl developer, odds are you are going to get someone who is a senior person, very experienced, very capable, and has seen a lot and knows what not to do as well as what to do. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, I think we actually do have a healthy community in that regard. Mm -hmm. And I think that with some of the things that you're going to see coming out for both five and six over the next two to three years, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to, I think, I hope, make Pearl much more interesting to a much right, wider range of people. And I'm hoping that we're going to see kind of a boost in the Pearl community over that period with some of the stuff that we're coming out with in the next 18 to 24 months. Cool. I'm definitely going to keep an eye on it. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure, as always. A great pleasure, too.